So a lot of you guys coming into the clinic with lower back pain want to know exactly what's going on. And you're shocked that we diagnose your back pain without the need of an ultrasound, MRI, or X-ray 99.9% .9 of the time. And I'm gonna tell you how we do this. Now, the first thing that we want to do is to make sure that nothing serious is going on. And we do this a lot of the time with some very simple questions. For example, we'll ask you, when did your back pain start? How did it start? And as well as that, are there any other associated symptoms? Now, if you say something like, I bent down to pick something up, or that I've had back pain on and off for a few years and it tends to relate to my movement, or that it gets worse when I'm sitting or standing or things like this, then we can kind of we can get a really good idea that your back pain is mechanical, i.e. it's aggravated by a mechanical load and it has a mechanical origin. Now what this means is it's less likely to be something which would be more serious, be that cancer for example. If you'd come in and you said that you had back pain that's worse at night, that is associated with night sweats, that you've lost a lot of weight and that you've got this general feeling of the general sensation of feeling unwell or that you can't find a position where you're comfortable, then we'd start to flag up the possibility that this was something a little bit more sinister and we'd refer you back to your doctor. But then also when it comes to the mechanical and we've you know, judged that it is mechanical, we can then dig down a little bit deeper as to what mechanically is causing your, your pain, i.e. what is the source of your pain. I'm gonna show you how we do that. All right, so we've got Rachel Weech here, who's my fellow osteopath at the Revitalized Clinic. I'm gonna show you a quick examination. So as we're examining our patients, we want to, first of all, see if there's any neurological irritation. A lot of the time you can have back pain, underlying neural, neurological irritation, which can slow down or at least change the prognosis of your injury. So we might do, say, a skin, a skin touch test where I detect whether or not Rachel's skin is sensitive to touch to see if the nerves are firing that way. Or as well as that, I can use a reflex hammer and just check her basic reflexes to see if the nerves are firing adequately to the muscles in her legs. Now, we can say that we've cleared that off and Rachel's absolutely fine that, in that area, so we can then look at movement intolerances. Now, if I ask Rachel from this position to tuck her chin to her chest and then slump on the spot, I'm asking her to compress the anterior column of her spine. This is where certain ligaments and discs are. And if you come up with me, please, Rachel. And now from here, if I ask her to say, look up and stick her chest and her bum out, and then from there, I'm now asking her to test or to load the posterior column of her spine and relax. But all of this is done from a seated position, so there's not much load involved. But if someone, say, for example, experiences pain while they're sitting, then this can be quite applicable to them. But for a lot of individuals, they need a little bit more load to aggravate their pain. So we're going to a stand, we're going into a standing examination. So from here, I can test Rachel under a little bit more load. So if you want to face this way from the Rachel. So from here, once again, I can test the posterior column of the spine with the joints and the certain other tissues by asking her to place her left hand at the back of her leg. And then from here, just to bend backwards and slump to that side. And I can ask her to do the same thing on the other side. Once again, just compressing the back of her spine. Now, if I wanted to test the anterior column of the spine, I would just ask her to bend forward and try and touch her toes. And if there's pain there, then it would indicate that it's something else going on. Now, as well as this, if I get her to sit again, I can go through another test to test for neurological tethering. This is some, one test that we use quite a lot with sciatica. So from here, I'll just ask Rachel to slump on the spot and to try and take her foot to the ceiling of the affected side. And then I'll ask her if it's painful. And if it's painful, I can just ask her to go back to that position again and then look up and see if looking up eases the tension. If looking up eases the tension and her discomfort reduces, bring you then it would indicate that there is some sciatic tethering and that needs to be addressed. So just to summarise, first of all, we'll make sure there's nothing serious is going on. Second of all, we find out what positions you're intolerant to and uh, also what tissues might be affected. Uh, but then obviously the fourth stage is creating a plan with yourself to get you pain-free doing the things that you used to really enjoy. Now it's useful a lot of the time to look at these tests as exposing intolerances rather than exposing damage. Pain most of the time doesn't mean damage, in fact pain comes on before damage. So yes we have more of an intolerance than we do damage, we then look with you to help, to help you to improve on your movement to reduce these intolerances to movement. It might be, for example, you going from not being able to bend down and touch your toes to you being able to do a squat which incorporates some flexion in the back or some stretches which incorporate some flexion 
throughout the spine. And after that, we can then move you on to more advanced movements that would then be more specific to you bending forward and touching your toes. After we can do that, then we're on our way to getting you painful. If you need to talk to us at any time, ask any questions, then feel free to go to our website, book a free consultation with myself, and we'll create a plan for you to get you pain-free as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.